The story of Chinese cuisine is a tale of constant evolution and diversity. Over the centuries, it transformed with the introduction of new ingredients and cooking techniques. While some key features emerged early on, others only gained prominence much later. Initially, chopsticks weren't meant for eating. They served purposes like cooking and stirring fires. It wasn't until the Han Dynasty that they took on the role we know today. The Ming Dynasty marked their widespread use for both serving and eating. And it was then that they got their name and current shape. The wok, possibly present during the Han, was initially used for drying grains. Its modern applications, like stir-frying, boiling, steaming, roasting and deep-frying, didn't develop until the Ming. This era also witnessed the integration of New World plants, such as maize, peanuts and tobacco. For someone accustomed to late 20th century Chinese cuisine, Ming food might still feel familiar, but anything before the Tang Dynasty, especially pre-Tang, would likely be challenging to recognize as Chinese. The Silk Road, commonly known as the trade routes connecting the Iranian plateau to Western China via Central Asia, played a pivotal role in expanding the variety of Chinese cuisines. Exotic ingredients traveled along this path, significantly influencing Chinese culinary possibilities. Interestingly, some of these foreign additions still carry traces of their origin in their Chinese names. It might surprise many Chinese chefs to learn that some fundamental ingredients were once imports from abroad. During the Han Dynasty, sesame, peas, onions, coriander from Bactria, and cucumbers all made their way into China from the West, leaving an indelible mark on the country's culinary landscape. While the written records from this period of Chinese history may be sparse, archaeologists delve into site excavations to unravel insights into food preparation and storage. In rare instances, artifacts and even preserved foodstuffs provide glimpses into the past. One notable discovery came in October 2005 at the Lajia site near the Upper Yellow River in Qinghai, where archaeologists unearthed the oldest known noodles. Dating back over 4,000 years and associated with the Kijia culture, these ancient noodles were crafted from foxtail and broomcorn millet. Legend attributes the introduction of agriculture to Shenong, crediting him with cultivating the five grains, Although the lists vary, they often include seeds like hemp and sesame, primarily used for oils and flavoring. The classic of rice enumerates soybeans, wheat, broom corn, and foxtail millet and hemp. Rice, interestingly, was not initially considered among the five grains cultivated by Shenong because southern China had not yet been settled or cultivated by the Han. However, many accounts of the five grains eventually incorporated rice into their lists. During the Han Dynasty, the Chinese diet revolved around staple crops like wheat, barley, rice, foxtail, and broomcorn millet, along with beans. The culinary landscape was rich with a variety of fruits and vegetables, including chestnuts, pears, plums, peaches, melons, apricots, red bayberries, jujubes, calabash, bamboo shoots, mustard greens, and taro. Meats featured prominently, with chickens, mandarin ducks, pigs, geese, sheep, camels, and even dogs finding their way onto dinner tables. Streams and lakes provided turtles and fish, while the owl, pheasant, magpie, sika deer, and Chinese bamboo partridge were commonly hunted and consumed. The Han people were no strangers to flavor, as their seasoning arsenal included sugar, honey, salt, and soy sauce. Beer and yellow wine were regular beverages on the menu. Intriguingly, during this dynasty, the Chinese honed food preservation techniques for military rations during campaigns. They mastered the art of drying meat into jerky and preserving grains through cooking, roasting, and drying. Legend has it that the beloved roasted flat Xiaobing bread made its way to China from the western regions, brought back by the Han Dynasty General Ban Chao. Initially dubbed barbarian pastry, Xiaobing shares ancestry with the Hubbing and is believed to have connections to Persian and Central Asian naan, as well as the Near Eastern pita. In a fascinating culinary exchange, Central Asians traded sesame cakes in China during the Tang Dynasty. 
During the Southern and Northern dynasties, the culinary scene in Northern China experienced a significant shift thanks to non-Han people like the Xi'an Bay of Northern Wei introducing their cuisine. This influence persisted until the Tang Dynasty, bringing the popularity of meats like mutton and dairy products such as goat milk, yogurts and kumis, even among the Han people. However, an intriguing turn of events occurred during the Song Dynasty, when Han Chinese developed a distaste for dairy products, abandoning the once welcomed dairy foods. Wang Su, a Han Chinese rebel who sought asylum with the Xi'an Bay Northern Wei, initially couldn't stomach dairy delights like goat's milk and mutton, resorting to tea and fish. Yet after a few years, he found himself savoring yogurt and lamb. The Tang Dynasty era was marked by a keen fascination with exotic foods from the diverse Tang Empire. The quest for plants and animals promoting health and longevity fueled a diverse diet. In addition to the previously mentioned foods, Tang Dynasty menus featured barley, garlic, salt, turnips, soybeans, pears, apricots, peaches, apples, pomegranates, jujubes, rhubarb, hazelnuts, pine nuts, chestnuts, walnuts, yams, and taro. A variety of meats grace the tables, including pork, chicken, lamb, sea otter, bear, with recipes for steaming, boiling, and marinating bear, and even Bactrian camels. The tradition of tea drinking in China traces back to the earlier Southern and Northern dynasties, 420, 589, and potentially even earlier, gaining popularity in the southern regions. Tea, derived from the leaf buds of Camellia sinensis, native to southwestern China, wasn't just a beverage, but held both aesthetic and medicinal significance. As the Tang Dynasty unfolded, tea became synonymous with sophistication in society, reflecting both refined taste and health benefits. This cultural trend extended beyond China, with Uyghur Turks expressing their fondness for tea by making tea shops their first stop when entering town. While the use of wrapping paper in China dates back to the second century BC, it was during the Tang Dynasty that the Chinese elevated tea preservation to an art form. They ingeniously employed wrapping paper as folded and sewn square bags, not just to store tea leaves, but to preserve their flavors. This innovative packaging method highlighted the Chinese commitment to savoring and cherishing the nuances of their beloved tea. The Song Dynasty marked a pivotal moment in Chinese culinary history, witnessing twin revolutions in commerce and agriculture. These transformations gave rise to a burgeoning class of leisurely and cultured urbanites, endowed with access to a vast array of culinary techniques and ingredients. For this community, eating transcended mere sustenance. It became a deliberate and rational experience. In a groundbreaking shift, the Song era introduced well-documented evidence of restaurants' establishments, where customers could choose from menus, a concept distinct from the limited choices offered by taverns or hostels. What set these restaurants apart was their feature of regional cuisines. Gourmets of the time documented their culinary preferences, underscoring how food and dining had evolved into a conscious aesthetic encounter, a phenomenon not witnessed in Europe until much later. In the coastal regions of the south, seafood took center stage, with cooked jellyfish seasoned with cinnamon, Sichuan pepper, cardamom and ginger, and fried squid with ginger and vinegar being popular choices. The Chinese relished oysters with wine, horseshoe crabs, red crabs, shrimp and pufferfish, whimsically referred to as river piglet. The Tang Dynasty not only embraced a diverse culinary landscape, but also imposed certain restrictions. The Tang court actively discouraged the consumption of beef, recognizing the economic value of bulls as essential draft animals. Additionally, Emperor Wenzong of Tang took a religious stance in Buddhism, leading to a temporary ban on the slaughter of cattle from 831 to 833. China's trade connections, both overseas and overland, enriched its cuisine with exotic imports. Golden peaches from Samarkand, 
date palms, pistachios, and figs from Persia, pine seeds, and ginseng roots from Korea, and mangoes from Southeast Asia added a vibrant touch to Chinese tables. The Chinese developed a particular fondness for sugar, and during the reign of Harsha over North India, Indian envoys to Tung China brought expertise in cultivating sugar cane, meeting the Chinese demand for this sweet delight. Cotton, initially arriving as a finished product from Bengal, took a transformative turn during the Tang Dynasty when the Chinese began growing and processing cotton. By the Yuan Dynasty, cotton had become the primary textile fabric in China. Hangzhou's imperial way became a culinary hub during the Song Dynasty, boasting a vibrant array of breakfast offerings and delicacies. From fried tripe to mutton or goose pieces, various soups, hot pancakes, steamed pancakes, and iced cakes. The morning offerings were a testament to the city's gastronomic richness. Noodle shops emerged as popular establishments, keeping their doors open day and night along the Imperial Way. Night markets, closing briefly at the third night watch, but resiliently reopening on the fifth, gained notoriety for braving winter storms and enduring the darkest, rainiest days of winter a testament to the unwavering dedication to culinary delights in Song-era China. China experienced a delightful infusion of foreign flavors during this period, with culinary imports including raisins, dates, Persian jujubes, and grape wine. Marco Polo, the Venetian explorer, observed that while grape wine was known, rice wine took precedence in popularity. The roots of grape-based wine in China trace back to the Han Dynasty, when Chinese ventured into Hellenistic Central Asia, though it remained a luxury for the elite. A diverse range of beverages adorned the tables, featuring pear juice, lychee fruit juice, honey and ginger drinks, tea, and pawpaw juice. Despite the prevalence of dairy products in the Tang Dynasty, these goods became associated with foreign cultures, leading to the noticeable absence of cheese and milk in the Chinese diet. The rarity of beef consumption was tied to the societal importance of bulls as draft animals. For the lower classes, the staple diet persisted with rice, pork and salted fish. Restaurant dinner menus revealed the avoidance of dog meat, though the affluent enjoyed a variety of wild and domestic meats, including chicken, shellfish, fallow deer, hare, partridge, pheasant, francolin, quail, fox, badger, clam and crab. Freshwater fish from nearby lakes and rivers flooded the markets while Westlake contributed geese and duck to the culinary palate. Common fruits embraced melons, pomegranates, lychees, longans, golden oranges, jujube, quince, apricots and pears, adding a sweet and refreshing touch to the rich tapestry of Chinese cuisine. The Yuan Dynasty ushered in an era of cross-cultural exchange introducing China to significant Western influences, including a major food crop, sorghum, along with various foreign food products and preparation methods. Yunnan cuisine, distinguished in China, showcased unique cheeses like rubing and Russian cheese crafted by the Bai people. The inclusion of yogurt in Yunnan's culinary repertoire can be attributed to a blend of Mongolian influence during the Yuan dynasty, the settlement of Central Asians in Yunnan, and the proximity and influence of India and Tibet on the region. The Ming Dynasty, 1368-1644, saw China actively participating in the Columbian Exchange, a global trade network involving goods, plants, animals and food crops. While silver dominated imports, the Chinese also acquired New World crops from the Spanish Empire, notably sweet potatoes, maize and peanuts. These crops thrived in lands where traditional Chinese staples like wheat, millet and rice faced challenges, contributing to a population increase in China. In the Song Dynasty, 960 1279 rice had become the primary staple for the poor. However, the introduction of sweet potatoes around 1560 gradually shifted the dietary landscape for the lower classes, impacting both food habits and economic dynamics. The surge in demand for food led to price hikes, exacerbating the struggles of the lower-class citizens during this period. 